Hello everybody and welcome to part 8 of what if Izuku Midori had a twin sister. If you're enjoying this series and want to see more, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. If this video hits 48 likes, we'll continue with the next one soon enough. All that said, please enjoy the video. The final exams had come and gone, with some students doing better than others. Regardless, they returned home to recuperate from the stress. When they got home, Izuku gave Himoto feedback on her actions during the exam, annoying the girl slightly. In retaliation, she did the same to Izuku, although he perceived the attack as helpful feedback, aggravating the girl further. Ugh, you're impossible. She shouted annoyed, storming into their room. Wanting to give her some space, Izuku spent the rest of the day in the living room. The next day rolled around and the students returned to class. Izuko and Himoto entered the classroom finding a gloomy atmosphere had formed. Those who had failed were pretty bummed out, bringing the energy in the room down. Izuko tried to cheer them up, but that only seemed to make things worse. Things changed once Aizawa entered the room. He informed the students that regardless of if they passed or failed, they'd be attending the training camp. All those who failed would have to attend some remedial classes. This seemed to cheer everyone up, although it did cause them to question the validity of what Aizawa said, since this was the second time he tricked them. After class finished, the students looked over the camp's itinerary, realizing that many of them were missing supplies. Noting that they had a day off coming up, Hagakure proposed the class plan a field trip to the mall, a proposition many accepted. The next day, everyone got together to go to Kiyashi Ward Mall. Once they had arrived there, since everyone had different things they wanted to buy, they slowly spread apart, leaving only Himoto, Izuku, and Nuraraka at the entrance. Well, I'll leave you two alone. See ya! Himoto said, bolting out of there, wanting to let her brother and Ochako have some alone time. Hopefully, you're reliable to make the first move, bro. She thought after gaining some distance. To Himoto's dismay, she soon spied Ochako running away flustered. As Uraraka talked with Izuku, she remembered what Aoyama had said, causing her to run away to process her feelings. Not wanting to really bother her brother after leaving like that, and having to buy some supplies like ibuprofen and a new suitcase, she set off on her way. Only later would she find out that Izuku and Shigaraki had a chance encounter where they deliberated about their philosophies, causing Shigaraki to figure out how he wanted to move forward. Sadly, because of that villainous encounter, the day shopping was cancelled and the mall closed down. A couple hours later, Inko came to pick them up from the police station, worried that something had gone horribly wrong. But the two siblings managed to calm her down quite easily. Because of that incident, the school had to change the location of the training camp, yet it didn't stop the first semester from ending or summer vacation from beginning. On the final day of the school year, after the assembly, All Might managed to intercept Izuku before he had a chance to go home, taking him to the teacher's lounge for a talk over some tea. So what did you want to talk to me about? Izuku asked after taking a sip of his tea. Well... I've recently received an invitation from I Island to attend I Expo. Because of my status and my agency's previous dealings with them, I was forced to accept. But I'm allowed to bring as many guests as I want. I thought this might be a good opportunity for you, so would you like to come along? You can also bring your sister if you want. All Might explained. Really? I get to go to I Island? Izuku asked, getting way too excited about such a simple trip. But... It warmed all my heart to seem this excited. Actually, there is something I do want to talk to you about, Izuku said as the two one-for-all wielders finished their tea. What is it, young Midoriya? All Might asked, wanting to help his successor out. I was wondering how you use your long-ranged attacks. After the exam, I started wondering if I could use any long-range moves, like you or my sister. I did the rocks thing during the exam, but I don't think that'll work long term, Izuku explained. Why not just use air pressure? All Might questioned. But I can't really control one for all to the point I can do that yet. But you don't have to do it right now. 
Just know that if you think you can push yourself even a slight amount for a short time, you can try to shoot out the attack and then go back to using your normal amount. You don't always have to use max output. I never did. All Might explained, leading Izuku to re-examine how he was using his quirk. Once the two finished talking, they went their separate ways. A little later, after a while of traveling, Izuku arrived at home. He went straight to his room, telling him what to all about the coming trip, inviting her along. We never even get to visit Dad in the US, so I'm totally up for a trip. No matter where it is, I mean, it totally beats staying here for another summer. Himoto expressed, getting excited over the thought of finally leaving Japan. I'll let All Might know then, Izuku replied, grabbing his phone and shooting him a text. Some more days passed and the two siblings headed to the airport where they met up with All Might and caught their private flight to I Island. The journey was a decent length, so knowing how taxing it would be for him once he arrived, the number one hero decided to rest up. While he slept, he dreamed of his early days as a hero, remembering some adventures he had had with his old friend he'd soon see again. During the flight, the two siblings were mostly left to their own devices. They talked, played on their phones, rested, and did other things to pass the time. Once they got close to their destination, Izuku started fanboying about the island, waking All Might up in the process. The pilot warned the passengers that they'd be arriving soon, so in preparation, the two siblings got into their hero costumes, with All Might going into his muscle form. The plane soon touched down, and after going through customs, the hero and his two students entered the fantastical city. The two green-haired siblings marveled at their surroundings, never having seen anything like it. After looking around a bit, the hero pulled out his phone, looking for directions to the hotel. Spotting a seemingly lost tourist, an assistant from the island came to help them, but once she spied the number one hero, she shouted his name, causing everyone else to take note of him, swarming All Might and, as a result, the two siblings as well. Luckily, the group managed to escape the mob of fans, running away to a more secluded area. Wow, I didn't expect we'd be stopped for so long. I'm afraid that at this point, we're in terrible danger of being late. All Might informed after looking at the time, confusing the two siblings. Himoto and Izuku looked at each other for a moment. Late for what? Himoto questioned, knowing that the same question was on her brother's mind. I wanted to drop in on a dear old pal of mine, who I haven't seen in quite a while. All Might explained, inviting the two students along. Izuku, being excited at the idea of being able to meet one of All Might's friends, caused Himoto to agree to tag along. Naturally, he told the two to keep one for all under wraps for the time being. Not even your close friend knows? Izuku asked, thinking it strange that All Might hadn't told him yet if they were so close. Only because danger tends to follow anyone who knows the truth about our power. All Might explained, causing Izuku to reflect on this for a moment. The three were then greeted by a girl who bounced her way right into All Might's arms, greeting him in the process. The girl and the hero talked a bit, with Himoto and Izuku looking at them somewhat confused. Oh right, young Midoriya, young Himoto, allow me to introduce you to my friend Dave's daughter. Hey, it's really nice to meet you two, I'm Melissa Shield. She greeted, with Izuku noting that this made more sense than what he had assumed. The two siblings then introduced themselves as first-year students at UA High, causing Melissa to deduce them to be All Might students. Noting that, Melissa started analyzing the students' costumes and asking about their quirks, to which they answered as best they could. It looks like you two should think about upgrading your gear a bit. She noted after taking a pretty close look. Although, these goggles are quite interesting. Thanks! They're meant to filter out the intense light created by the flames I produce. Himoto replied. Wow, that's really smart. Melissa denoted, pondering the implications of her quirk. All Might then reminded the girl that they were in a hurry, so they headed to David's lab to greet him. After a heartwarming reunion and some fanboying on Izuku's part, noticing that All Might seemed to be reaching his limits, David suggested Melissa take Izuku and Himoto to see the expo, an idea to which they agreed to. 
With the kids occupied, David only had his assistant to take care of, so he gave him the day off, allowing for some alone time between himself and Toshinori. The latter quickly deflated, exhausted from having to maintain that form for so long. Following David's suggestion, the three kids went to visit the expo, talking on the way. Once they arrived, they spotted countless heroes, exciting Izuku greatly. Melissa started showing them around with Izuku marveling at everything. You fanboy about the stuff just a bit too much, Himoto commented. Don't tell me this doesn't excite you, Izuku replied, not getting how this didn't excite his sister. Yeah, the flying submarine and diving suit are great, if you like water, Himoto complained. Personally, I'd rather stay on land where my quirk works. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, there's something over there you might like better then. Melissa informed, guiding them to the next item that was being shown off. Hey, look! They really are here. Uraraka informed her companions, running to greet her friends. Hey, Deku! Himoto! Over here! Oh, hey, Uraraka. Izuku replied, pleasantly surprised to see her there. What up? What are you guys doing here? Himoto questioned. I was about to ask you guys the same thing. Ochako replied just as Yamam and Jira arrived, greeting everyone. Yao Yorozu got the tickets from her family, and she had two extra, so we played a game to decide who'd come with her to the previews. Cool! We, uh, um... We got ours from a uh, lottery, Himoto explained to the other girls, saying the first excuse that came to mind. Aren't these your friends? Why not tell them you came with All Might? Melissa questioned, asking Izuku. Yeah, we go to the same class at UA. But it's better to keep the part that we came with All Might a secret, Izuku explained. Just trust me on this. Who's that? Uraraka asked, getting slightly jealous, leading to Melissa introducing herself to the three new arrivals. With the six present, Melissa continued showing everyone around, with the conversation breaking off. There was the main group who continued on looking at everything in the exposition, while there was a secondary one formed of Uraraka and Izuku, who seemed to be off in their own world, talking to each other as if no one were around. So, what's the deal with those two? Melissa asked Himoto, finding it strange how quickly Zuku's interest in everything had died down. Well, although he won't admit it, Izuku likes Uraraka. Mm-hmm, and I'm pretty sure she likes him back. Himoto explained, whispering it into Melissa's ear, with her giving a thumbs up as an acknowledgement. Hey, how about we go get something to snack on? I know this really nice place nearby. Melissa suggested, feeling slightly peckish. The students agreed, heading to a nearby cafe, where they talked about what it was like to be a hero student at UA. Then, in an unexpected turn of events, Kaminari and Mineta ended up as their waiters, handing them their drinks. It was one surprise after another, as Ida turned up moments later, scolding the two for slacking off during work as they were talking with the group. Hearing an explosion going off in the distance, the group headed to check it out, finding Kirishima and Bakuro taking on a training exercise. It looked exciting, so some of them decided to give the exercise a go, primarily the two siblings. Testing out the blazing smash, Himoto managed to clear the whole thing in about 16 seconds, angering Bakugo. However, what really made him furious was once Izuku got his go. He managed to clear the entire thing in only 10 seconds, securing first place. Quick question, um, your brother? His quirk. It isn't really suited for his body, right? Melissa questioned after seeing Izuku's display in the exercise. I'm not sure I understand. What do you mean? Himoto asked, not fully understanding the question. It looks to me like he's purposely limiting himself on using the quirk. Although, he doesn't seem to have too many injuries, so I think I could be wrong. Oh no, oh no, no, you're 100% right. You see... We first thought he was quirkless, but it turns out he had this sort of stockpiling power that gathered his excess energy over time. 
But when he started being able to use it, he already had too much excess energy. So he has to regulate to lower amounts until his body can catch up to the power he has, you know? Himoto explained, again giving an excuse they had practiced over time. Ah, I see. Melissa let out, thinking of a support item she had been developing that would fit perfectly for such a quirk. Toroki seemed to go after the two surprise arrivals, causing Bakuo's patience, however limited it may be, to completely vanish. He rushed into the testing grounds, demanding another go from the announcer. But some of the students, concerned with how that made their school look, jumped in to stop Bakugo. It took them quite a while, but they did manage to subdue him. They still had some time off, so they enjoyed the expo to their heart's content. They even managed to produce a couple extra tickets for the expo's opening gala, handing them to Kaminari and Mineta as a reward for their hard work. Since Aleph Class 1A was going to attend the event, they decided to go to it as a group. They didn't have much time until the gala began, so they all went their separate ways to prepare themselves. Izuko and Melissa took a pit stop at Melissa's school to grab a support item on the way, one she had been developing. While the students were out enjoying themselves, David took All Might into his lab, taking some readings on the hero. He did a complete evaluation of the symbol of peace, to some surprisingly negative results. I don't get it, Toshi. Why are your quirk levels going down so dramatically? David asked All Might after seeing the readings, worry in his voice. I know you were seriously injured by all for one, but to suddenly get these numbers is absurd. What in the world happened to you? I suppose that if you're a hero for a long time, your body starts to catch up with you. Especially when you push yourself as hard as I have. All Might explained, sorry that he couldn't share his secret with his old friend. At this rate, the symbol of peace, the only reason Japan has been able to keep such a low crime rate, will disappear. Honestly, sometimes I wish you had stayed back in the US. Maybe then I would have been able to help you. David regretfully opined. Don't be so pessimistic, Dave. There are still plenty of heroes out there. Not to mention the good people that support them like you. All Might said, trying to cheer his friend up. Besides, I can still be All Might for a few hours a day. I'm not dead yet. Come on, All Might. What if a monstrous villain appears and you're not capable of saving us again? Listen, that day will come. But I have no intention of stepping down until it does. But I know when it does come, someone else will step up to take my place. The symbol I built up may crumble, but when it does, a new one will rise up to take its place. All Might informed, thinking of Izuku, Bakugo, Himoto, and all his other students as he said this. I guess, David responded, still unconvinced. He wanted All Might to remain in the spotlight forever. To be able to remain everyone's hero. After their business concluded, needing to prepare themselves for the coming festivities, both friends parted ways. Unbeknownst to the heroes or the island security team, earlier in the day, a group of villains arrived at the island. Aided by a mysterious benefactor, they head to a hangar, grabbing all the equipment they'd need for their mission. Sure, there were a couple unexpected revelations, like the fact that apparently All Might would be attending the gala, yet it didn't matter. They still had a job to do. After getting their equipment in order, they left to execute their mission. Meanwhile, although most were running a bit late, the students of Class 1A slowly arrived at their meeting destination. Sorry about that, you guys. Where is everyone? Izuku asked, thinking he'd be the last to arrive. They aren't here yet. Does a proper meeting time mean nothing to you people? Ida stated, slightly angered that so many of his classmates were late. Although, I do have to say, Himoto has proven himself to be the more responsible of you two. Hearing that, Himoto struck a pose, taunting Izuku slightly. Ochako then came into the room moments later, apologizing for being late, with Jiro and Yaomomo arriving moments later and doing the same. 
This is my first time wearing formal wear. I even had to borrow something from Yaomomo. Uraraka confessed to Izuku. It uh, looks really good on you. Like, perfect. Izuku commented, blushing, causing Uraraka to get flustered. Melissa was the last to arrive, with the security system going off moments later. Finding the development strange, since it wasn't the proper protocol, the students decided to go to the party to get some help from All Might. Unfortunately, when they got there, they found that he, along with everyone else at the party, had been taken as hostages. Thanks to Jiro's quirk, the students managed to get the information they needed from All Might, along with instructions to stand by and stay safe. After deliberating about which course of action to take for a while, Izuku managed to convince his classmates that they needed to help out. So, following Melissa's directions, the young heroes started making their way to the tower's control area. At the same time, their opponents worked to obtain their objective. Oh, why does this tower have to have so many stairs? Himoto complained as they reached the 70th floor. But still, they pressed on, running to a dead end at the 80th. Before they could deliberate how to proceed, Mineta opened the door to the floor so they could keep going, trying to reach another emergency staircase. However, they had accidentally alerted the villains to their presence by opening the door, leading them to block off the floor with the blast doors. Seeing the doors closing around them, Taroki shut his eyes, blocking the last one from closing, allowing Ida to zoom past and break down the entrance to the floor's central area. While they walked around the plant factory, they noticed the elevator moving, hiding in order to advance later. Still, the villains ended up finding Kirishima and Bakugo, who had gotten lost trying to find the reception. After inquiring about why they were there, the villain didn't buy their explanation, so he engaged the two students, with Todoroki jumping in to protect them. Knowing that the three of them would be able to take care of the villains, Todoroki used his eyes to elevate his classmates, helping them along. While Bako, Kirishima, and Todoroki kept the two villains busy, the others tried to press on, but they found every way they tried to be blocked off. Luckily, Izuku noticed an escape hatch. The way to use and access it was tricky, but luckily Mineta fit the conditions for it. Unfortunately, he refused to do it, so Kaminari had to give him some proper motivation. In the end, he managed to help the students up to the maintenance room. The group continued on, running into a swarm of robot security sentries towards the 130th floor. The students, however, had come up with a plan to deal with it, sending Kaminari at the robots but he ended up knocking himself stupid before doing anything productive. My turn then, Himoto said to herself, jumping into the fray with a gigantic wall of fire aiming it at the robot's feet, melting them in place. It took immense concentration to pinpoint the heat to that extent, but even after that, more just kept coming, jumping over those who had been stopped. At that point, Mineta started using his sticky balls, keeping more of them in place. But again, the robots just jumped over and kept coming. Okay, I'm gonna try this then. Himoto said to herself, creating some fire and placing it above her hand. Blazing smash! She shouted, punching one of the robots, unleashing fire right at them, sending them flying back. Right after, Ida attacked, sending more back. Izuku decided to play it smart. He activated Melissa's gift, but thinking back to what All Might had told him before going on the trip, he focused a higher percentage into his arm, unleashing a smash into the air. The wind pressure did the job for them, keeping more of the robots at bay. After rescuing Kaminari, working around the drones, the students kept going. Hey, what's up with that armband gauntlet thingy? Himoto asked as they went up the floors. Oh, Melissa gave it to me. It's supposed to allow me to use higher percentages without hurting myself, Izuku explained. She told me you gave her the idea to give it to me. After advancing only eight more floors, the students came across another swarm of drones that threatened to stall their progress. Because of the delicacy of the machines around them, the students were limited in how they could brawl. Still, they split up, with Izuku, Ochako, and Melissa pressing onward while the others kept the robots at bay. Between Ida, Yamomo, Jiro, Mineta, and Himoto, they managed to hold up quite a bit, allowing for a head start for the others. Eventually, 
everyone's stamina ran out, and they were captured by the security drones. The three who managed to evade capture kept on going, reaching a room with a bunch of wind turbines. Thanks to Ochako's quirk, Melissa and Deku managed to reach the emergency exit, but on the way, the two got caught in a gust of wind, sending them off course. Luckily, Baku and Todoroki had returned by this point, helping Izuku and Melissa get into the building. They found some more thugs on the way, but quickly disposed of them, reaching the top floor. As they made their way to the control room, they found David and his assistant stealing a piece of technology. The two explained why they did all of this, but before Izuku had to act in any way, a villain going by the name of Wolfram came into the room, using his quirk to trap Izuku. Sam then handed the payload over to Wolfram, being shot by him as a result. Before the villain could dispose of Melissa as well, Izuku broke out of his restraints, attacking the villain. Melissa took the chance he had been given to flee, running out of the room to re-enable the security protocols of the tower, while Deku kept the villains busy. But he was pinned down, giving the villains the chance to escape. Damaged by his encounter with the villains, Izuku still went after them, with All Might doing the same. Izuku made it to the roof shortly, delaying the villains from escaping, but wanting to protect David, inconvenienced Izuku as David was used as a hostage to stop the young hero from acting. Lucky for them, All Might showed up at the scene, stopping the villains from escaping. The villains seemed defeated, and the day saved, but Wolfram sprung into action again, using the quirk-enhancing device. He captured Dave, hiding him behind a wall of metal and cable so the heroes couldn't reach him. All Might and Izuku fought long and hard against Wolfram, but every time they seemed to get the upper hand, their opponent seemed to pull out a twist, like being able to use a second quirk. It was only thanks to everyone showing up that the heroes were able to prevail. Himoto, Todoroki, and Bakugo were able to destroy enough of the machinery that was attacking Izuku and All Might that the two heroes were able to deliver a double Detroit smash to the villain, defeating him although it did come at the cost of Izuku breaking the full gauntlet. The whole situation changed David's mind, showing him that the future was safe in the hands of the next generation, and that even if All Might were to retire or pass on, that there'd be some other heroes out there to keep the peace in his place. With the incident resolved and all the perpetrators arrested, things could start returning to normal. Keeping in mind that the main facilities needed repairs and that the people of I Island wouldn't be fully safe, the expo was postponed. Because of his status, David managed to avoid any significant repercussions from his actions, although he'd likely never get the chance to invent anything ever again. All Might had promised his students a nice meal as a reward for saving the day, so they went on to have quite the enjoyable experience, eating and playing together. Mineta was disappointed that they weren't being interviewed or even mentioned on the news since they had saved the whole island, but his classmates thought it made sense, especially when taking into account that they were unlicensed students. The professor. He did all of this thinking of you, All Might. Izuku noted, taking a break from the party. He had gone out to think things over, with All Might joining him since he needed a break from maintaining his muscle form for so long. But still, I can't help but think that, had I been a better, a more reliable successor of one for all, then maybe all of this wouldn't have happened. Young Midoriya, thinking like that won't turn back time, All Might explained. And, if you continue down the path of a hero, you'll definitely encounter many more sad incidents such as this one. It'll happen all the time. I myself have faced many like it over the years. All Might then looked at his successor, getting a look at the sad expression on the boy as he imagined what it must feel like. If you don't like it, do you want to give up on being a hero? All Might asked, testing his young protege. No, no way I'm quitting, Izuku professed. I'm going to be a hero, one just like you, All Might. One who saves everyone with a smile on his face. So you have no regrets? All Might asked. None, Izuku asserted. Then overcome this sadness and move forward. 
Just keep moving until you overcome this wall of sadness and become the hero I know you can be. All Might said, smiling at the boy. I will, All Might, Izuku responded. Because someday, and likely soon, you have to take over as this world's symbol and defeat all for one. Once and for all. All Might thought, not wanting to put too much pressure on the boy. With the conversation over, the two returned to their victory party in order to enjoy the calm after such a long storm. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Remember, 48 likes and the next video will be out soon enough. I don't know when exactly because my plans are kind of uncertain during this time. So just be patient, guys. The next video will come soon enough. I do hope you liked this episode on Eye Island. It's kind of weird because I tried to kind of mesh it into the plot and tried to mesh the plot into this a bit with a bit of foreshadowing and a couple mentions of stuff between each other because I feel like the movies are a bit too disjointed from everything. They just feel so separate that you kind of need to connect them. So I kind of took the effort to try and do that as you'll see in the next part, which I'm already working on. With all that said, as always, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, have an absolutely fantastic day, guys. Bye!